veteran civil rights attorney Benjamin Crump leads the legal team representing the family of George Floyd. He's represented the family of Trayvon Martin, as well as uh, the families of victims of police violence, including Michael Brown Jr., Breonna Taylor and Jacob Blake. And he joins me now. Uh, Benjamin, thanks so much for coming on the show tonight. What is your takeaway from day one of this trial? Well, I thought that the prosecution was very powerful from beginning to the end of the day with the opening statements where they educated all of us that it wasn't eight minutes and 46 seconds, but it was nine minutes and 29 seconds that Derek Chauvin tortured George Floyd to death with his knee on his neck. And then the first witness was a bombshell. The fact that this 911 dispatcher said that I didn't want to be a snitch, but I knew what I was witnessing in that video was wrong. They were killing a man. And so I thought that was so impactful to start the trial off. And they ended the trial very powerfully with Donald Williams when he uh, talked about the humanity within him that after he went fishing and watched a fish suffocate from lack of oxygen and then to witness a human being, George Perry Floyd Jr., suffocate from a lack of oxygen, how you can't be human and that don't affect you. However, it didn't seem to affect Derek Chauvin at all. It was intentional, of him course, keeping his knee on his neck. Of course, the defense rejecting uh, the claim that he suffocated to death. They are claiming he had underlying health conditions. They're saying he used drugs. They're trying to pass the blame onto all of these other factors, even blaming the crowd for distracting the police. Do you think anyone on the jury will buy that after watching the video they saw today? Because they only need one juror. Well, I pray they won't, but I've been a civil rights attorney for all of my professional life, but I have been black all my life. And we all know that we can never take for granted that a police officer will be held accountable for killing a black person unjustifiably. So even though we think the video yes. is very compelling, that we understand that this is a referendum on can black people get equal justice in America. Yes. Uh, well put. Um, let me ask you this, Benjamin. Earlier this month, the city of Minneapolis agreed to settle a civil lawsuit uh, from George Floyd's family uh, for $27 million. How do you feel about that decision? And do you think it impacts the trial of Derek Chauvin that we're seeing right now, that the jury might think, well, justice has already been done. He already got, the family have already got this big payout. No need to send this guy to jail too. As the attorney for George Floyd family with my great co-counsels, uh, we led that effort in doing what we were retained to do, and that is to get civil justice under the Seventh Amendment of the United States for the family of George Floyd. And now we're looking to off, uh, Attorney General Keith Ellison and his prosecutors to give George Floyd's family the justice, the criminal justice, under the 10th Amendment that says state governments have to hold people accountable for committing criminal acts against other citizens. Why is it that Black people should not be afforded for justice, that we should only have to be content with getting partial justice. When the Diamond yes. family, a white woman was killed right here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and her family received $20 million. Nobody said that, well, maybe yeah. her family shouldn't be afforded criminal justice. No, right That's now, America, point. you have to live up to your high ideals of equality and justice for all. That means black people too, America. And you talk about being black in America and what black people have had to face in terms of waiting for police to be held accountable. Of the three Louisville police officers who fired their weapons into Breonna Taylor's apartment, killing her, only one was charged. And he was charged 
with endangering Taylor's neighbors when his bullets passed through Taylor's walls and entered a neighbor's apartment. What is the difference between these two incidents, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, that led to a murder charge here and almost nothing in Louisville? Well, I think obviously the video is uh, very graphic. It galvanized people in cities all across America. In fact, cities all across the world, it is the most watched murder of a citizen by the police in American history. The uh, internet says it's been viewed over 50 million times, and it's probably been viewed on television just as much. So I think that's what makes this case different from Breonna Taylor's case, who I was honored to represent her family as well. And we must remember that and when people say this is a hard case, this is a difficult case, we rebuke that. This is not, this murder case is not hard when you look at this torture video of George Floyd. Had yes. George Floyd been a white American citizen, nobody would say this is a difficult case. They would scream bloody murder and expect justice to be swift. It's only because George Floyd was an African American that they now engage in this intellectual justification of discrimination. Yeah. It's a very good point. And you're right about the crowd and the cameras. The defense lawyer is trying to blame the crowd today. The irony is without the crowd and those cameras, we wouldn't be having a trial like this. Benjamin Crump, thank you so much for your time and your insights tonight. I appreciate it. Hey, thank you, brother. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.